Okay. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Anu Ariboja, and I am on the marketing team at Sensory, and I'll be moderating today's uh, today's webinar. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. We will be recording today's webinar, and you'll receive an email in a couple of days um, letting you know how to access that recording. Uh, during the webinar, you can ask questions using the Q&A button, and uh, at the end, we will answer those questions. And if we don't get to your question, uh, the answers will be shared in the follow-up email that also contains uh, details on how to access the recording. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, if uh, our panelists can turn on their cameras, <clears throat> as I will, as I go through the agenda, um, the our panelists today will wave and uh, then they'll give a more extensive inter, uh, introduction uh, before they uh, dive into their segment. So today's webinar, we're exploring the next-gen intelligent voice solutions with a dive into Voice Hub and X, XMOS's XCore Voice. Um, we'll begin with an introduction and an overview of Sensory from Jeff Rogers, our VP of Sales. And then we'll continue with an introduction to XMOS and XCore Voice um, from Anit Chopra. And then we'll head back to um, Jeff for creating a voice user interface with Voice Hub. And we will then continue back to Anit and he'll demonstrate that voice user interface with a live demo on uh, XCore, XCore Voice, uh, sorry, uh, the XCore Voice platform. And we'll close with a Q&A. So it should wrap up in about uh, 45 minutes to, to an hour. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. Jeff. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all. Great to be here with our friends at Exmos. Um, uh, I want to start by a, a quick introduction to Sensory. Uh, let me just share my screen here. Um, I think most people on the on the webinar probably have heard of Sensory. We've um, we're well known in the industry. We're certainly well known for running embedded, and that's why uh, we love partners like uh, Exmos, who have a, a great platform that we can run on. So I wanted to spend just a couple minutes just introducing Sensory to those that don't know us and talking a little bit about what we're doing with XMOS. Um, and then as Anu said, um, after the introduction uh, from Anit of XMOS, then I'm gonna dive into our Voice Hub and I'll show you a sneak peek at some of the newer stuff that's uh, coming down the line on Voice Hub as well. Um, so quick introduction to Sensory. Um, our technologies have been widely deployed. Um, we have over 200 licenses around the world in more than 3 billion products. So all the um, logos that you see on the right side, these are all real customers that have done real products using sensory technology. So not, not little experiments, not demos, not POCs. I mean, they've done those as well, but they've also done real products. And so you can see that there's a wide range of companies that we work with. Um, I would say our key markets are, are certainly consumer electronics, mobile wearable cameras, AR, VR gaming, home IoT appliance, automotive, fintech, enterprise. Um, and then um, we're doing more and more in medical and healthcare. Um, and a lot of the um, a lot of the, su the success of Sensory is really based on the fact that we can run 100% on device. Um, we have announced our new Sensory Cloud solution, which also can run a lot of interesting technologies in the cloud, including speech to text, text to speech, and our biometrics as well. But in today's webinar, we'll focus on our deeply embedded technologies um, since that's what we're running uh, running in partnership with XMOS. But again, it's pretty impressive um, customer line up there. And uh, we're, we, we've, been, we've been in business for more than 25 years. So it's, uh, we, we bring a lot of experience and a lot of um, uh, uh, experience you, uh, helping our customers design and define a, a voice strategy and how to design that into products. And so um, uh, these are all benefits of, of working with Sensory. So we've got really two offerings, as I mentioned, we've got our embedded offerings, and then we have our, our cloud on-prem and, and larger on-device offerings. Today, I'm gonna focus on truly hands-free. 
Uh, Truly Hands Free is our WakeWord solution, and we're certainly known for WakeWords. Um, if you talk to Spotify or Samsung products or LG products or uh, Zoom or um, gosh, the list goes on and on. Uh, these are all based on Truly Hands Free. So this is WakeWords, it's commands, it's it's designed to be super low power. And obviously we're running all this on, uh, on the XMOS processor. Also included in our bedded solution is our Truly Secure. Truly Secure is our face and voice biometrics. These run on, uh, on an application processor uh, typically. And again, in partnership with XMOS, we can certainly run a, a wake word, uh, low power on XMOS, and then on the application processor, if there's one in the product, then we could run face and voice biometrics, for example. And then the same with Truly Natural. Truly Natural is our large vocabulary on device domain specific language models. And this, this, this technology is used today in things like uh, appliances, like microwave ovens. It's being used in uh, conference rooms as part of Zoom rooms, as an example. And here it allows the user to, to speak in a very natural way where we can have vocabularies of tens of thousands of words. As, and, and again, this all runs on device on an application processor. Whoop, jumped ahead on me there. Um, we've got a new version of Truly Natural that uh, we're releasing here in September. And again, this won't run directly on XMOS, but again, in partnership with XMOS, um, most applications require a wake word that would run on XMOS. And then the new version of Truly Natural includes full on speech to text running on device, which is really amazing. And we're talking memories in the size of like 40 megabytes. Um, so it's not hundreds of megabytes and it does provide full on speech to text. So some of the new things that are, are coming down the road here. And again, today we'll, we'll focus on truly hands-free. On the cloud side of things, again, uh, typically before you go to the cloud, you need something local. So we could, we could run a wake word on XMOS and then we could, we could uh, uh, go to our Sensory Cloud. Sensory Cloud is designed as a Dockerized container, meaning that it can run in the Sensory Cloud, it can run in the Customer Cloud, it could run on-prem as an example. And this provides full speech to text uh, for transcription, dictation, control, that sort of thing. Text to speech, our face and voice biometrics, including our, our sound ID um, is all part of our Sensory Cloud. Um, so again, today I'll focus primarily on Truly Hands Free. So on the memory side of things, uh, Truly Hands Free Wake Word can range from as little as 30 kilobytes up to a megabyte. Now on the XMOS processor, there is a megabyte available me of, of memory, and it, it depends on how, what's being what the chip is being used for. So if the chip is is just doing our Wake Word, and and really that's the main focus, and then after that everything goes to an application processor or some other, um, uh, for example, then we can run a, a much larger Wake Word. But if we're running, uh, if, if, if the application requires running the um, noise suppression from XMOS or other technologies, then we can be much smaller as well. So a lot of it depends on the usage and um, what's available in the product. Is it, is it near field? Is it far field? So all those things have to be taken into account when designing a, a voice into a product. So for example, in a TWS product, we can run much smaller wake words because the signal to noise ratio is really, really good. Um, in a product that's being used from a distance like IoT, you'd want to run a larger model because distance is more challenging. Um, but uh, with sensory, you can see that there's a range that we can provide there. Um, we can also run our, our truly hands-free, I don't know why this keeps advancing. Um, we can also run our truly hands-free commands uh, also on XMOS. And, and again, the size you can see here ranges from 40 kilobytes to, to one megabyte with the same, same content as I talked about before. Now, the, the beauty of our, of our phrase spotted commands is it feels like it's got a full NLU solution running or a natural language understanding. It really is just doing phrase spotting, but it does it in such an amazing way that it doesn't matter if I say things before the word or after the word. So if the command is, you know, what time is it? I can say, hey, what time is it right now? And even though I said the hey and the right now after it, doesn't matter. Here's what time is it, spots it, and it does that, that function. So kind of think of commands as like a set of wake words, but they're always preceded by a wake word. So you can you can set the, the acceptance threshold, the, the, the balance between false accept and false reject. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as I get into, uh, into the voice hub uh, description. So both of these will run on the XMOS processor. Um, as you can see, we support a lot of languages today and we continue to add more. You can see the different categories here. So truly hands-free, 
this is what's running on XMOS today. You can see that all of these languages are, are currently supported. And then if we go over to our Voice Hub, truly hands-free, you can see the languages that are included in Voice Hub. So the power of Voice Hub, as you'll see in, in just a minute, is it allows you, the customer, the developer, to create your own custom wake words, your own custom phrase body command sets, your own truly natural uh, grammars as well, and select between a lot of different languages. And then finally, voice up, I'll, I will, uh, after, um, I, I'll turn things over to Anit here in a minute to introduce XMOS and kind of talk about their platform a little bit and what they're doing. And then when he turns it back over to me, I'll be sharing an actual Voice Hub screen and uh, so you can see uh, what Voice Hub is. But basically, as I mentioned, it allows you to create custom wake words, custom phrase spotted command sets, custom natural language grammars, um, your choice of, of chip and OS. And uh, again, obviously, we're, we're you know, focused on XMOS in this, uh, in this uh, webinar here today. But there's a lot of different options and it really re removes a huge hurdle that we used to have. Uh, Voice Hub today, we have over, over a thousand companies and developers that are using it. And uh, before Voice Hub, for, the, for my first uh, 25 years at Sensory or so, um, you know, customers would come to me and say, hey, Jeff, I want to develop this wake word and this command set. And I'd say, okay, let's, let's go through it. Let's think it through really clearly. Let's make sure we know what we want. Okay, here's a statement of work so we can go out and develop it and let's get some recordings. Let's do some data. Uh, let's we'll have our linguist fine tune it and then we deliver the set they get the set and they're like oh you know what actually we kind of want to change a word it's like okay well let's start all over change a word um those days are gone with voice hub so voice hub is great for ideation for sure because it allows you to do all this yourself with no cost and very little time and we do have some customers that are actually releasing product to market today that are based on voice hub development so for again for close talking voice hub is excellent for far field, for more noisy environments, a hand-tuned model is still going to outperform Voice Hub. And again, I'll talk more about this in, in a little bit, but um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tool that's very powerful and is going to allow you, the developer, a great deal of freedom and flexibility. So let me turn things over to Anit at um, XMOS, and uh, I'll let him introduce XMOS, and then we'll jump back in, and uh, I'll show you Voice Hub. Anit, take it away. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, while I'm sharing um, <clears throat> today, I'll I'll touch on just briefly introduce Exmos to you, and in the sense uh, talk about what Jeff uh, expand on it and how we use truly hands free integrated into an Xcode voice application, and then quickly give you uh, some uh, some demo before I transfer to Jeff and maybe after Jeff as well. So I'll take the risk of sharing my desktop. Hopefully um, you can see my slide. Um, so just uh, so for folks who don't know about XMOS, we have been in the industry for uh, long as well, 15 years. Um, so we are a, a highly configurable system on a chip, a semiconductor company, and our chip are basically ap applicable towards uh, intelligent IoT uh, market segments. So we have shipped tens of millions of units uh, to a wide variety of hundreds and customers. Some of them uh, are, are highlighted here and they've deployed into uh, many, many different type of products and devices. And I'll, I'll maybe give a, give a quick glimpse into that as well. And um, as I said, we are highly flexible, highly configurable, which means we can offer different type of computes to be run. And on the lower right-hand side, you see um, artificial uh, intelligence. So we have a dedicated vector engine that allows us to do that compute. We run free RTOS for general purpose programming, IO management, and, and you can see from, uh, from an architecture perspective, because we are a homogeneous integrated tight architecture, we really outperform in certain benchmarks for those computes as example, in this case against an um, uh, Cortex M7. Um, so what that what allows us to do that is basically because we are uh, very low latency and we have a very highly deterministic architecture. It allows us to be that flexible and nimble and 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 uh, elevate our performance for embedded applications, specifically uh, artificial intelligence and, and intelligent IoT. Um, going to the next slide. Um, so when I say uh, flexible and highly configurable, 
it's basically one silicon that, that gets deployed into many. Um, at an application level, you can do vision applications like human presence detection to voice applications, which we'll talk more about, um, and all the way to motor control for industrial and even automotive. Um, and what you see in the blue up there uh, on the slide, uh, you basically, it's different market segments that we have been deployed into. And the green dots are actually what we are shipping even today um, uh, in all sorts of different devices and form factors. So it's one architecture that feeds into many and, and that's why uh, our customers love it where they use it for something initially and then uh, expand, uh, expand uh, into more products and portfolios within their own company. Um, no, but, but here today we are, we're, we're talking about voice specifically um, and just like sensory allows for natural voice interface on embedded we are the right partner with them to actually make that happen on our silicon um, so we take that truly hand-free create an application around it so that we can deliver new natural voice interfaces well on embedded um, but but if the customer needs it can happen on the cloud as well so these voice applications that i'm sharing from fitness machine to power switch to lighting xmos has been deployed into these applications today. So we are shipping products, live products that, that have been deployed and, and these use cases have manifested themselves. And most of them, our usage is really on the embedded uh, uh, running as an offload engine for far field capability. Um, just to give you a glimpse into our portfolio, uh, what you see as vocal fusion and XVF on, on this chart is essentially delivering that natural interface and mostly our products deploy far field capability, which means you're trying to take in a noisy environment, you're trying to give a clear signal, clear signal for the voice that you're interested in. So you do acoustic cancellation, noise cancellation, and different forms of noise cancellation so that uh, you, you're providing the right signal, the voice signal to what it's intended to do. And we do both in human to human, which is known as conferencing, the Zoom call we are doing today, Teams calls. So we get deployed into those type of devices, but also human to ASR. And, and these are basically turnkey standard products. You plug and go, they're sort of black box to customers. But what you see on the right side, bordered on the red, is what we're interested about today is Xcore Voice. This is, we recently introduced actually last quarter, where we have opened up the platform and we have opened up customization for customers as the market is maturing, customers are demanding and they have their own user experience they want to drive. And with a platform approach and opening this up, uh, it allows us to allow customers to modify, but also integrate third-party apps like, like Sensory uh, truly hand-free so that customers get a great out-of-box experience. Well, let me. Let me talk a little bit about um, Xcore Voice before I, I show you uh, uh, how it is on the website and, and a quick demo. Um, so of course it's built on um, uh, Exmos um, hardware platform, a silicon called Xcore AI. And by the name, you know it, it has a vector AI processing and, and dedicated hardware engine to do that. Um, and then you have XTC tools that provide all the tools and the platform software running things like free RTOS uh, on which Xcore Voice is built. So all the libraries, the vector libraries to do AI. And then we glue that all together through voice frameworks, um, algorithms, voice models. Um, and the three critical things in Xcore Voice is one, it's open source. So you have the ability to get all the source code. Um, it allows you a framework which you can pick and choose and deploy different algorithms. And I said before, it allows for third-party voice models, uh, could be sound detection, could be local commands, could be some, could be glass break, could be something else. And, and in today, we're very pleased to have this conversation in partnership with Sensory on how you can run local commands offline onto the platform, right? And you don't need any outbound connectivity and et cetera. So uh, uh, slightly, uh, maybe uh, I'll not go technical on, on, on folks here, but the blue is exactly an example of a framework of Xcore Voice framework. <laughs> so you have acoustic cancellation, interference cancellation, sudden suppressions and uh, uh, gain control 
all of these are front end far field capabilities that are running and cleaning up the voice um, and then integrating into sensory library and, and sensory model that can be created on the voice of platform which Jeff will talk more about. So the demo I'm gonna show you in a minute actually integrates um, a, a model that we created on voice sub, download it, integrate into this Xcore voice framework and then show some examples. Um, so as an out for an out of box experience, we provide, um, you can go to the Xcore voice, I'll show that to you in a minute, but we provide three pre-built examples so that you get started, you have a better out of box experience. And two of them actually integrate uh, sensories uh, truly hands-free. Um, and it's a basically offline command dictionary. And it's, it's, it's limited in the number of commands you want for the application you want. The first example I'll show you is essentially a, a smart home, smart automation um, um, uh, example of commands and, and wake word. And it's a low power design. So the fact that you can run everything offload embedded on the device means you don't need to go to, you can do low power, which is important. You don't need to be connected. So it's more secure. It's more private and your, your latency is, is definitely lower, right? So you don't need to go to the cloud. But if a customer chooses, you, you have sensory cloud um, and you can have an application processor that does more, uh, runs uh, truly natural and, and stuff like that, that can do more uh, than what we do in truly hands-free. Um, so uh, we have a dev kit, but what I'll try to do is I'll shift from, um, I'll shift from, presentation to actually show you how you can get to Xcore voice and sensory example design. So we have listed in, under the developer section, we have listed example designs um, and we have pulled out the voice, um, some of the commands and example designs. Um, and it's very simple. You get the kit, which is a dev kit um, that we have available on DigiKey, install the tools. Uh, the link allows you to get to the tools fast. You download the pre-built examples that we have with Sentry, run it. And then you can even customize it. So we made it easy for you to get to that. And on the left menu, you can, you can directly go and access um, the, the, the Sentry built-in uh, pre-built example using the truly hands-free. And this example, and we have 16 commands. You could do more, less. Uh, in a couple of different languages, as, as Jeff alluded to, there are multiple languages supported. And once you get comfortable with it, you can actually create your own. Um, uh, Jeff will go into it, but we also have access to, for you to easily get to the voice of platform from our website as well. So having said that, let me um, stop sharing for now. Um, and give you, uh, before, before I show you, uh, what I'm trying to run here is this is actually the L71 board. Um, it looks, it's much smaller than, than it looks on the page. Um, and this is running the uh, Xcore voice solution with truly hands-free command model built into it. Right now you see uh, an LED, which is red. Um, I'll actually show you the things on a screen because it's hard to follow. Uh, uh, you can't see the LED that clearly, but I'll say hello XMOS and you see the green light blinking. So this is an indication of it working. Uh, for the rest of the demo, what I'll do is I'll share a terminal screen so that, and while I'm doing that, I'll share again. Hopefully you see the terminal as well as this. So uh, obviously I use the, the keyword. Um, I've been testing it so that I, I wanna make sure it, it's, it's working. And uh, it's on, currently it says it's um, entered low power, which means it's running in low power, less than 50 milliwatts. And uh, once I give the wake word command, it will come up. And then I'll issue some smart home commands that have pre-built, which was built from the voice of platform. We have integrated it. And, and this is this is example I want to show. So I'll, I'll speak. Hello, XMOS. Switch on the TV. Volume up. Volume down. And, and what you'll see is 
it's entering low power back. So it, it was waiting for more commands. So I don't have to use the wake word every time. I can uh, use the wake word once and execute a lot of commands. And you can see it's saying volume up, volume down. It recognizes uh, recognize some of those commands. So I'll, what, I'll, what we'll do now is we'll pass it back to Jeff. He'll talk about voice hub. He'll talk about building a, a model. And then uh, the model that Jeff built, I'll, uh, I'll try to demonstrate that uh, right after Jeff is done. So I'll stop sharing and back to you, Jeff. Great, awesome. Thanks, Anit. Uh, it's always really cool to see um, developer part de development partners uh, like Xmos in this case, actually using our, our voice hub tool. Um, so I'm sharing, um, sharing my screen right now. And so you should see, um, you should see my uh, the voice hub tool up here running. So right now, um, and you'll notice I've got a couple different tabs open, so I can just jump from tab to tab rather than waiting for the time to build. But but this is our voice hub tool. So um, right now I've I've selected a new project, which is a wake word project. So here I can just type in the name that that I want. And actually, let me make this a little bit the screen a little bigger here. See if that helps. I don't know if that helps see a little bit better. So here I can just type in the name that I want. So I can just say, hello, XMOS as an example for the project name. Um, I can add a description here if I want to. Not required in truly hands-free and I'll, I'll tell you more about this, uh, this, this uh, option here in a minute. Um, and then um, down here, I can select the SDK version that I want. So this is our latest version. Uh, next, I can select the size that I want. So in this case, I'm saying, I wanna start with a really small wake word and you can see that there are different options here, 80K byte being the smallest voice hub model, and then about a megabyte for the largest voice hub model. Now you'll recall that in my presentation, I talked about that we can go as, as small as 30K bytes. So if we hand tune models, we can go much smaller than this. Within voice hub, 80K bytes is the smallest that we can go. So again, there's some different options there. Um, next, I select the language that I want. And you can see here that the, these are all languages that are supported in Voice Hub today. So for this one, I'll be using US English, but I could, I could switch to UK English or Indian English or Australian English or Kids English. So you can see those are all different English engines that we have, or I can go with French and you can see there's different French ones and Mandarin versions, uh, Portuguese, Spanish as well. Um, so all these, are, all these languages are, are part of Voice Hub today. Um, so I'll stick with US English for this demo. And then the output format, you see that I've selected here the XMOS um, core. The default is just our standard SDK, but in this case, I wanna, I'm wanna i gonna select this one so that everything I build in Voice Hub will automatically be formatted for XMOS. So I don't have to do some extra step between Voice Hub and uh, you know, getting it to, to uh, have a file that can run on, on XMOS. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So then I, here I can just type in the wake word that I want. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna say, hello, and I'm gonna do it this way. Um, and I'm basically showing you that I'm, I'm phonetically spelling it out. Um, if I were to put XMOS together, uh, that probably wouldn't have understood what I wanted. And this is one of the features that we built into, uh, into VoiceHub. So this little speaker icon over here, when I, when I select this, you'll hear a TTS engine basically pronounce back to me what the recognizer is expecting. So it's not designed to be you know, this, this glorious TTS for me to listen to. We can do that with our sensory cloud solution. This, this one really is for, for the developer to say, okay, I typed in what I want. This, is this, you know, the, the, the TTS engine is gonna play back kind of what, it, you know, what the recognizer is expecting. So let me press the icon here and we should hear it here. Hello, Wexmos. Okay. Hello, Wexmos. Great, so that sounds good. As an example, if I would have typed in HBO without spaces, it would have said hubba. And I would have listened to that and I would have said, oh, I don't know, that's not what I meant. And then I put spaces between the H, the V, and the O, and then it would say HBO. And, oh, okay, that's what I want. So a little bit of debugging can happen right there. So once I'm done typing in my wake word, and you'll notice that I could add in another wake word. So we can have we can run up to 10 wake words at the same time. Um, what we're seeing, particularly in automotive right now, a lot of our customers in automotive are running multiple wake words because they want to have a custom wake word and then they might want to go to Siri and then they might want to go to Amazon, et cetera. Uh, and they might want to go to Google or others. And so again, we can run multiple wake words at the same time or just a single wake word. So it really depends on the, on the project. So once I've done, I, I press build and this is going to pop up a window that's basically going to say, okay, here's the SDK version. 
Here's the name of the project. It's US English, it's 80K bytes, and here's the format. Once I hit continue, it then sends the, the project to the voice hub server and we'll start building. The build time for a single wake word like this is typically around 45 to 60 minutes. Um, and people ask, well, gee, why does it take so long? Well, what we've done with voice hub, because we've been in business for so many years, we have a, we just, we literally have terabytes and terabytes of data. And we've created a synthetic, a proprietary synthetic data approach where we, we take the, we take the, the wake word that's typed in and then we, we bang it against that data to find a really nice fit between false accept and false reject. So false accept is I'm talking and I say, hey, you know, hey, I see moss on the rock. And I don't want it to respond because I didn't say the wake word. But if it responds, that would be called what's, what's called a, a false accept. A false reject is when I say the wake word and nothing happens. And so typically what you want is you want a really good balance between false accept and false reject. And what the, what Voice Hub is doing is it's saying, okay, let me take all this data that I have, let me take the wake word that you've you've created, and I'm going to power through literally terabytes and terabytes of data to find a really good balance between false accept and false reject. And up here you can see um, operating points option, a single point. This is recommended because it's much faster to build as opposed to all points. But what happens is when I hit build, it's then going to build it and it's going to give me a recommended point and say, okay. Here's a good point on a frontier graph. On the left side, your faults accept, and on the bottom, your faults reject, as an example. And there's going to be a curve between those, and this one's pretty well balanced. Well, in VoiceHub, you are able to, to pick different, different operating points as well. And so, again, to the developer, you can say, hey, for my application, I really, really don't want any faults accepts, and so I'm going to, I'm going to go lower on that to make sure that I don't have any, or I limit them as much as possible with the, the, the opposite of my false rejects might be a little higher or vice versa. So that, that allows that, that flexibility. So rather than waiting the 45 minutes, I've already built this same project here. And so now you can see it's built. I can test it right here on my PC. And I can just hit this and say, hello, XMOS. And it's gonna recognize it here. And I can say, hello, XMOS in the middle of the sentence. It's gonna pull it out again and hello, XMOS. And it's gonna recognize it. So did a little quick testing on the PC, no problem, but I can also download it and then test on my phone. So over here, this is a screen share of my mobile phone that I've got plugged into my laptop. And you can see that we're run I'm running my Voice Hub application here. And so if I go to download, you can see two different options here, download the model or download the application. If you're new to Voice Hub and you don't have the, this application here, you click on this and you can, you can select, is it for Android or iOS? And we support both of those, of course. And so uh, I, I've already got the application, so I don't need that. So then I download the model and I say, okay, I'll, I agree to the terms and conditions. And then you see this QR code. So then on my phone here, I, I select scan QR code and you see, I just scan that. And then that loads it in. So now I've got the project that I created here in VoiceUp running on my phone. So now I've got it running on a separate platform as, a, in, as opposed to the, the PC. So now I can just say, hello, XMOS. And on my phone, it's going to say, yep, you got it. And you notice I'm speaking really fast and I can speak naturally. And I can just say, hello, XMOS. And it's going to get it every time. It's brilliant. So again, we have customers that are using VoiceHub for production products today. Others, they use VoiceHub for development. And then we hand tune models. So it really depends on the application and requirements. So that's a single wake word. Now let's create a command set. So here I've got a command set and I've got the uh, mower blower guys outside. So I don't know if you can hear that or if my mic's cutting it all out, but uh, that's what's popping up on my phone. Um, okay, so I've got a command set. So here I can just, I can basically say, okay, what, what do I want to do? And so I can, I'll, I'll just call this the, uh, the toggle demo. Um, okay, and what I wanna do here is, again, I can add the description. I won't worry about that. I've, I've selected you know, our, our standard SDK version um, on the size. I'll do, um, again, cause I'm running on XMOS and I'm probably using other things with a, you know, a noise suppression others perhaps. So I'll go 256 on the model. Um, and then uh, the commands, I can just type in the commands that I want. So as an example, driver window, so these are uh, like toggle commands for a car, uh, as an example. Passenger window, uh, let's see, all windows. 
and I can just keep typing in. And you'll notice that as I, I type them in, I hit enter and it, it builds another line for me. Same thing here where I have the the um, the speaker where I can I can listen to it and make sure that it's it's the the you know the the thing I'm typing in is what the recognizer should be recognizing. So I can keep doing that, create my whole set. So let me jump over to this one. So here I've already got the project built and uh, I've, I've integrated the, the XMOS wake word that I had, um, that I selected over here. And you'll notice that I just said XMOS wake word and nothing happened. Oh, there it goes over there this time. I was just testing it a little bit to see how much I could push it. Um, so here's the wake word. I brought that in. Here's the size. I've selected the platform. And these are all the commands that have already been typed in. So again, I can test it on the PC or I can go right to the, to the uh, you know, testing it on my, on my mobile phone. So I'll, I'll uh, scan this QR code. Okay, and that loads it in. So now I've got this, this same project over here. So you can see this is the wake word. These are all the commands. And so I can say, hello, XMOS driver window. And it says, okay, yep, I got that. Now you notice that I didn't have any pause between the wake word and the command, but I can also say things like, because these are phrase spotted commands, I can say things like, hello, XMOS, I want the passenger window down right now. I think I missed it. Hello, XMOS, I want the passenger window rolled down right now. So even though I said, I want the passenger window rolled down right now, it still spotted that, which is again, the, the beauty of, of truly hands-free and phrase spotting. Um, hello, XMOS, stop. Hello, XMOS, rear driver side window. And these can all be toggles. So if, if it's down, it goes up. If it's up, it goes down, et cetera. And so the idea of this demo is just to kind of show a quick demo where I've built in the different commands uh, that I want. I've combined it with the wake word that I created in the last project. So I just pulled this in. Again, as you hit the drop down, any wake word that you've created will be shown in the list. And then you just you select the, the wake word that you want, and it builds it into this combined project. So now I have a complete project here, and I've selected the XMOS uh, platform. So in a minute, I'll turn this back over to Anit, and he'll he'll be able to show you, okay, taking this project, now let's run it. Um, but before I turn it over, just really briefly, I want to show you kind of a sneak peek at what's coming down the, the road in, in Voice Hub. Now, this is this is around a, a truly natural or large vocabulary project. So again, what what my expectation or the the idea here is that, excuse me, we could run a wake word, we could run a local command set on XMOS, or and then on on a on a uh, uh, application processor, uh, we can then uh, uh, run Truly Natural, which again uh, requires a little bit more uh, MIPS and memory to do. But here is a project that I've created for a coffee machine. So you can see I've I've defined my intents. Basically, there's only two clean and, and order beverage, and then my slots. And slots are basically uh, buckets of words that I might say. So, you know, under beverage, as an example, you can see, uh, and I can, I can, uh, you know, I, I've, I've added like a sensory one in here. I can, I can just type in what I want. And this, uh, uh, with truly natural, these lists could be hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands long. Um, so this is this is for those that know Voice Hub. This is pretty standard stuff. And then down below. I create the, the grammar. So here you can see it's number of shots like single shot coffee or large coffee or single shot large coffee or large single shot coffee or I want a coffee or I want a single shot coffee, et cetera. So you get the idea. What we've added, what's new is we've added um, the, uh, we, we've, we've dialed into ChatGPT. And so here, if I'm not sure what intense I want, I can select this little light bulb over here and it's going to say, okay, because I've defined it as a coffee machine, it's going to then, you know, access chat GPT and say, okay, what are some intense suggestions? Oh, I want to make coffee. I want to adjust the strength. And so anything I select, uh, add water as an example, then it will automatically add those into my intents. And then I can do the same thing with slots. I can say, well, what, what kind of slots? So I, I came up with, you know, beverage and number of shots and, and whatnot, but there's drink type and size and quantity and strength and brew method and blah, blah, blah. And I get more suggestions. So using the power of ChatGPT, it can kind of help or assist the, uh, the creative process as far as what are some different things that I might want to add here. So in, in terms of intents and slots, and then as I'm add, adding um, uh, phrases down here, it can also help with that. So you can see here that there's a, there's a suggestion here for suggested kind of phrases. And this again goes off to ChatGPT and 
and says, okay, how, how might I do this? So this is all part of uh, Voice Hub 2.0 that's that's coming down the, the, the pipe here pretty quickly. So here you can see some different phrases. Brew a cup of coffee or set a timer for the coffee to start brewing, et cetera, et cetera. So this, I just want to give you kind of a sneak peek at that. All right, so enough of this. Let's go back to Anit and Exmos with this project right here uh, that's been built. And then Anit's going to show us how, um, how that runs on their platform. That sneak peek was awesome, Jeff. Uh, yeah. I didn't know about that one. <laughs> that yeah. sounds pretty cool. Fun uh, stuff for sure. Yeah, no, it is. Um, so, so yeah, back, back to business. Um, so what Jeff just showed you is exactly how we had done it. Uh, of course, it takes a lot of time. Uh, it takes time to build it. So we didn't want you to wait. And once the Wakewood model and that automotive model that uh, that Jeff had created, he, he had provided us a binary, for example, and um, we then integrate into Xcore Voice. And the way we do it is uh, we download that file into a, a, a directory, and all we do is change the configuration files to pick up that binary instead of something else. So basically, we don't change any source lines of code, et cetera, to integrate a, a new model. Uh, uh, and that's how well Sensory and XMOS have worked together to integrate and, and deliver an ease of use experience, right? Give, give that flexibility. So both companies are striving to make that experience more natural as well as the voice more natural. So I'll give you, uh, so what I've done while, uh, while Jeff was talking, what I did, and let me actually share, um, uh, I was having a little fun with it too. So um, I, I, uh, I exactly did that. I uploaded the new model. I reflashed it um, uh, onto this device and, and I enabled the display. And when Jeff was actually talking and when he was using the wake words, et cetera, it actually did recognize and was doing it. And I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll do it and, and show you the same. So it's exactly the same model that, that Jeff built. Um, and in 10 minutes, we were able to change, um, recompile, and, and run uh, on this device. Obviously today I didn't recompile, but I just downloaded it uh, onto this device, but it, it's that quick and easy. Um, so I, I'll use some commands. Uh, hello XMOS, driver window, passenger window, and just to make sure, uh, volume up, volume down, it shouldn't work, right? Because I changed the previous model had all these uh, smart home commands and I wanted to make sure that those are not working um, on this one. So th this is the automotive model. So this is the power of, of integration. This is the power of truly hands-free integrated into Xcore Voice uh, running on our Xcore.ai platform um, and available on website for you guys to go try it out, download, get the kit, uh, download the software, um, it's all there. And if you want to make it your own, you can always go to Voice Hub and create your own models integrated, uh, hopefully within within 10 minutes. And with that, I'll pass it back to Anu and Jeff to conclude. Hi, thanks. Thanks so much. That was very informative. And um, it looks like we've got a few questions. I will... Um, select answer live and read them out loud and uh, the panelists will um, answer the questions that are relevant. So uh, we've got a question that says, um, <clears throat> are you coding parts of your code in XC? Which XMOS tools do you use? I believe that was uh, addressed by Anit and I'll let you yep. answer that. So um, the Xcore voice application runs on, so we, we do use XC, but, uh, but it's embedded into the Xcore voice uh, framework and the framework sits on top of FreeRTOS today. Thank you. And then we have a question uh, and this says, how does the number of commands affect the size of the model in voice hub? Is there a limit to the number of commands? Yeah, I'll take that one. So, um, the, it's there is a there is a correlation between the number of commands and the size, but it, it doesn't grow linearly. So as an example, 
And it also depends on, on the phonetics of the wake word of the commands that you type in. So if you type in a, a much longer wake word and you select 80 K bytes, when you hit build, it's going to build that model and it might be a little above or a little below 80. So 80 is kind of the, the starting target. And then it depends on the, the, um, the phonetics of what you typed in and, and how many different commands you typed in. If you select, so as an example, when I selected uh, 256 uh, K byte for the commands, once I, once I actually build that in voice hub, you might see it be significantly larger because it's including all the different operating points. So don't, don't get sidetracked by, oh my gosh, it's now 500 K bytes. If that's the case, it's, it's because it's showing you, here's all of the different um, search points that you might use. And then it's up to you to, 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 to pick the one that you want. But typically, you know, if I, if I start with 256 K byte and then I type in a dozen commands, yeah, it will usually grow to 265 or 270 K byte or something like that. And it, it really depends on the number of commands as well as the phonetics of that command. So those targets are just that. They're a target, they're a starting point. And then as you add more, it builds, but it doesn't build it linearly based on the number of commands. So in other words, if you if you select 80 K bytes and then you type in two commands, it, it doesn't, you know, doesn't jump to, to 160K byte. It's going to grow a little bit, but it's not linear. Okay. Got a few questions coming in hot too. Um, we were asked, looking at the different voice solutions comparison slide, which part would you recommend for Amazon Alexa with uh, ACM needing speech recognition and communication? Um, maybe that, that was a question for me. So we have a product called XVF3615. Um, that has all our far field algorithms. And in this case, uh, it has the, uh, the, the two ways to do it. Uh, one, you can use a standard product, which is the 3615, um, which has the Alexa wake word built into it. Um, and and you, can, you can use that to, to run Alexa based. The other way is actually to go to Voice Hub and, and create a model using Xcode voice. And that gives you more flexibility to add different wake words, different command models, and, and use it in, in that fashion as well. But standard out of the box is what we call XVF3615. So if you go to the website and xmos.ai and read more about it, you'll get all the information on how to get it. Great. So I have a question. Um that asks, how do you deal with close words that may trigger as well? Like maybe, hey, hello, Exton for this example. I think that's for Jeff. Yeah, it's a good question. So um, uh, in Voice Hub, if I have two words that are the same in two different phrases, like um, lights, like turn on lights and turn off lights as an example, Voice Hub will automatically by default throw an error that says, oh, Lights are in both. It might cause a it might cause a substitution. I'm not going to let you build that. Now there is a there is an advanced panel that allows you to get around that, and it allows you to go ahead and build the project. But by default, Voice Hub is, has been designed to try and help the developer avoid things that are too similar. Now, um, one of the one of the things that always comes up is is testing. How do you how do you test a recognition set? And some people believe that the way to test a recognition set is that if the word is sensory to then say mensory, ensory, pensory. That, that's not the, the right way to, to test a speech recognition model. If you're, if you're trying to trick it, you'll probably be able to, particularly in Voice Hub, and it also depends on the, the, um, the search point that you're using, whether it's uh, you know, to try and reduce false accepts or try and reduce false rejects. Um, but really what you should do is, is test it in kind of a normal kind of expectation of, hey, here's, you know, here's a normal office environment, here's people talking, or here's the TV playing. And uh, and then use that for testing as well. You you want to use a lot of different examples, not just a single person testing, obviously, to get something that's more statistically relevant. Um, but to to try and you know deal with close words, using moving that operating point is going to help with that. So if I use a tighter if I use a tighter operating point, let's say you know typically there's between one and twenty one different operating points, and VoiceHub might recommend using operating point ten as an example. Well, if I'm finding that there's 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 too many substitutions with close words, I can reduce. I can go from ten down to eight, or to seven, or to five, or to even down to one to make it a lot more tight, which which could in in turn drive up the false reject. So again, there's 
there's that, that trade-off between false accept and false reject. But within VoiceHub, there's some options to, to deal with that and play with that. Thanks. So we've got, okay, let me, uh, there was a question I missed earlier. So it says, do you have a blockchain or chart to show what is actually on chip, on premise and cloud call from container? I believe that's for Jeff um, in thinking about um, the difference between embedded and uh, cloud. Yeah, so um, it's a good question, and probably it's it's one that would take longer than I have in this mm -hmm. to, to answer it. So I would recommend who's ever asking that question to, to reach out directly. I can certainly answer that. Um, but typically what we do is is we would run the wake word locally on XMOS as an example, and after the, and then there's a couple different ways you can do it. One is you can say, okay, after I hear the wake word on device, then immediately send all the audio to, to the cloud solution where I'm doing speech to text as an example. So so the, the flow would be once a wake word is recognized, grab that audio from there, send it all to the cloud. The other option is that you might say, well, I'm going to run some things on device. And if there's not a recognition match on device, then I send all the audio off to the cloud. Um, so there's a couple of different ways we can do it, but uh, it's probably a little bit more detailed than we have time for now. So yeah, I'd love to explore that more with who's ever asking that question. Um, and I knew there was one other question I want to make sure that we get to. And that was, how do I get access to VoiceHub? It was a great question. And, and I apologize for not making that really clear in my presentation. Um, go to the Sensory website. And on our website, uh, you'll see resources. Under resources, you click that. And you'll see a big, big button that says request access to VoiceHub. Just request that. Fill in your information. And typically, access to VoiceHub is provided within 24 hours. So it's, it's usually pretty quick. So um, thank you, whoever asked that question. Thank you so much for asking. Okay. Uh, then we have, um, we'll just do a few more here. We've got a lot, but like I said, if we don't get to your question, we will answer that in the uh, follow-up. Um, we've got an interesting question that asks, what about the success of, a, of the system if it is based on a less available language than English, French, or Chinese? That is to say, is the success related to the availability of voice training data per language? Um, yeah, I, I think if I understand that question, so within VoiceHub, there's a bunch of different languages that, that are supported. Um, but as an example, we don't support um, uh, Czechoslovakian as an example. And so there's there's two there's really two options. One option is that we try and use a, a we try and use another language that might be spoken in that in that region, whether that's uh, Russian or German or English. And that's not the best approach because we, I mean, if it's for Czechoslovakia, we would want to use Czechoslovakian. We don't have that support in VoiceHub. We can, if we hand tune models, we can support any language that you want. As an example, I've got several customers in Vietnam right now. I don't have a Vietnamese uh, standard language model. And so what we do there is we, we collect additional data. We use that data, we hand tune models, and we can support both truly hands hands-free wake word as well as command sets using that approach. So to answer your question, you should select the language for the market where the product's going to ship. And if that language is not supported, the best approach is to create hand-tuned models, which we can do. Great. Um, so uh, another question, can we support an analog mic? Um, you you can, but we would need an a to a, a, ADC. Um, these have MEMS digital mics um, uh, on our board. Um, analog could work, but you would need an uh, analog to digital converter. Okay. And um, how do we present environmental noise in VoiceHub? So VoiceHub, um, the synthetic data that we've that we're using to create that, we also have a uh, noise files that we use. And so when, when you type in your, your wake word that you want or your command set that you want uh, and you hit build, it sends it off to the voice hub server where we're not only using the, the, the voice data to, to create the, the model itself, but we also have all these files of uh, noise files that we're using. And so when we, when we create a project in voice hub or when we hand tune one, we do a similar thing where we also take noise files and we say, okay, here's the here's the wake word in quiet, and here it is with conversation noise, and here it is in car noise, and here it is in outside noise, and here it is in babble, blah, 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 whatever. 
Um, and along that process, and this is why Voice Hub requires 45 to 60 minutes to, to create that is, we're not only creating the wake word and balancing the false accept and false reject, but we're also testing and tuning against the noise files. And so once those, once those noise files are added, we test again, and this is all done in simulation in Voice Hub. And then we then Voice Hub makes adjustments to the to the settings of that wake word, and then it adds the next file and does the same thing. We do a very similar process when we hand tune, wherein we we gather data of people saying the actual wake word, and we also have these these ginormous uh, noise file databases that we use. And then a lot of times we also do it based on the type of product. Is this product used in the car? Well, then we use car noise and we use babble noise and we use radio noise and you know those types of things. Or is it used in the home? Well, then we use babble noise and TV noise, et cetera. So all along the way, we're tuning and testing and developing the wake word to recognize in the presence of noise rather than re relying 100% on trying to artificially remove that noise. Okay, just a couple more here. So um, how do we create a truly voice a uh, truly secure voice biometrics model and can you run this on the xmos kit yeah that that's a good question i'll, I'll start <laughs> that answer and i don't know if uh, Amit, uh, you know if anit wants to add to that so it's a good question um so truly hands-free has been ported and runs on xmos and truly hands-free includes both wake word phrase spotter commands and within wake word it also supports a enrolled fixed wake word and a user-defined wake word. With enroll fixed wake word and a user-defined wake word, those do include speaker verification. And so that is supported right now. Now that would mean that there's an enrollment. And so the, the use case would be that I get the product and it's it's kind of like when you get a new iPhone and it has you say, hey, you know, Siri or hey, Siri six different times. Similar kind of thing here where I would enroll saying that wake word, then that enrollment is gonna say, okay, not only do I know Jeff's voice now, but with the speaker verification that's included in, in Truly Hands Free, now I can say, I heard the wake word and that was Jeff's voice. So those are supported today. Voice Hub doesn't, doesn't support the enrollment, doesn't have the, the, the biometrics, but Truly Hands Free, which has been ported to XMOS, does support those technologies. But, thank you. I think, I think you answered it well, Jeff. Um, so that, that's very good. Okay, and we've just got one minute left. So um, I see there are a few more questions in the Q&A. We will answer those um, and uh, share those answers in the uh, in the follow up. I want to thank everyone so much for uh, joining today's webinar. And like I said, look out for the follow up email and you will gain access to this recording. Um, thanks again to Xmos and to and and to um, to Jeff uh, for for providing a, a, an engaging and informative uh, presentation. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye, all.